Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike and today we're going to talk about the top five easiest ways to make money in the antiquing world. Now, I know right off the bat, some of you resellers out there think of the word antique and get scared off by it. Don't. I'm telling you, this is a very strong market. We've been uh, case in point. We've been doing this for well over a decade and it sustains our family of five. So don't think antiques can't be a part of the reselling world. Now let's talk about that world, eh? word antiques. Now, a lot of people think it's 100 years old or 25 years old or 50 years old. To me, antique is something we like to call nostalgia. What brings you nostalgia? Now, we have people that come in that are 90 years old into our shop and they get nostalgia by a lot of things. But we also have people that come in that are 30, 35 years old that get nostalgia by certain things. So really, when you guys are getting into this business, don't think it always has to be from the late 1800s to be antique. So I, I want you to get that right out of your brain right now because that is just simply not true in this market anymore. So we got a lot of things we're going to talk about today that are going to help you guys make money in this business. Because at the end of the day, the more antique shops that are out there and the more people that are out there, it's just better for the whole antique market. It keeps things on the market. It keeps things out of the dump. It keeps things out of the trash. It really is a very important thing to this business. So if we can come out here and give you guys a little bit of knowledge on why you should get into this game and why it is sustainable, we are here for that. So make sure you guys flood the comments below with any questions you have for me about the antiquing world, getting into reselling antiques, or anything along those lines. So let's start off our countdown today with number five. Number five on our list today is finding the future trends. Now, this is not as hard as you might think because as a reseller, you're looking for collectors. So who is getting into the collector's market? It's usually that 30 to 40 year old area that's what we're looking for because that's usually the ones that are starting to buy homes, settle down, have a family, you know, start filling that she shed, start filling that man cave. And what do they want to put in there? It goes back to that word we talked about earlier, nostalgia. They want the stuff that they had when they were kids, what mom had, what dad had, what grandma and grandpa had. That is all stuff that brings nostalgia back for them. So that is what they're out there looking for. So like right now with that 30 to 40 year old market, vinyl records are huge because that 70s and 80s kids that was the big thing is listening to the vinyl records how all the hair bands and classic rock and country you know kiss uh any money i mean just let's name a few here i guess but those are the that's, those are huge i mean when we first started in this game there were three to five dollar records you could sell them for and that was about it so they really were hard to touch now you're looking at 10 to 20 to 25 dollars for a vinyls and even upwards of that guys i mean the market for vinyl is crazy right now they look at pyrex you get you know the 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 wives that want to get their mom's pyrex dishes or grandma's pyrex dishes so they go for the crazy daisy or you know any other kind. I mean, there's so many out there. The Amish print. I mean, the butter print. You know, you name them. There's so many out there for Pyrex dishes that people are looking for. And those are just two small examples. I mean, you could go into depression glass or Fenton glass or pottery. Uh, then you get into the 80s stuff and you start looking at toys like Star Wars, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You guys just got to get ahead of the game. Your biggest range is at 30 to 40 year olds and figuring out what they were into when they were younger, that is what's gonna be really big coming up. So if you can get ahead of that and figure out the future trend before somebody else does, you can make huge money in the antiquing world. So let's get on to number four. Number four on our list today is networking. Now, if you don't know what networking is, it's pretty much going around talking to people, building relationships, building connections, because that is huge in this business. Finding out, oh, the, you know, John collects gas and oil. So if I come across gas and oil, I already have a buyer for it. Or, you know, Diana collects Pyrex. So guess what? I already have a market for it if I pick it up. Or it also it helps you with knowledge as well as you something you can talk to somebody about and get information from. So the more people you find that are in this game, the more knowledge they have in certain areas and that's something you could use as well. So the biggest thing with networking is letting your family know first. Family and friends are important. Letting them know, hey, guess what? This is what I'm starting to do. If you know of anybody or if you actually have anything that you're looking to get rid of, let me know. Let me look. I mean, that was something that when we first opened our store, we would talk to people, our friends and family, and let them know, hey, this is what we're looking to do. And that's how we got a lot of our business at first, is we were going to our cousins, uh, second cousin on their mom's side, and we'd be traveling an hour away to this house, and they're like, oh, we got a house full of stuff that my grandma left, and we have no idea what to do with it. So we'd go in there and be able to buy large quantities of items because a lot of times people just don't know what to do. So what do they do? They get dumpsters and they throw it away or they just throw it to Goodwill and Goodwill jacks the price up because Goodwill isn't Goodwill anymore. 
Goodwill is pretty much an, a thrift store on its own that's jacking prices higher than some antique stores. So, I mean, networking is very important. So if you're gonna get into this reselling game or if you've been in it and you haven't started talking to people and building relationships at auctions, estate sales, estate sales are something we'll talk about here shortly, but building relationships there and at auctions especially, that's where all your resellers and collectors are at. So the more names you can build, we have a, a little uh, directory of a bunch of business cards that we have that we can just reference if we like, oh, hey, picked up a bunch of sports cards. Guess what? I can call Larry down in Oklahoma. He's a huge sports card collector and he'll come up and buy them every time. So it really helps having that network out there of people that have different expertises and different collections and it really makes it a lot easier for you to get in, buy things and resell it. So you're not sitting on things for a long time. You'll be able to buy it and move it and get money flowing because that is really big in this business is keeping your money moving. Anytime you let it sit is a hard, hard business to stay in because it can get very frustrating. So when you're out there and you start getting into this business, start building what you can call your reseller network of people that are collectors and resellers and buyers and everybody along those lines because it's only going to make your inventory larger and hopefully your profits a lot bigger. So let's go on to number three. Number three on our list today is restoration. Now, restoration is something I recommend for a lot of new resellers in the antiquing game. It's a way to get things a lot cheaper, to put a little bit of work into it, to bring it back to life. So even like a piece of furniture that looks just faded and oh, just terrible, put a little bit of Murphy's oil on that and give it a fresh new life. Or even a milk can that's just all rusted up and all gray and just nasty, a fresh coat of green paint on that, that helps it sell a lot easier. Um, or even just if something's missing a piece. I mean, look at, you know, even dressers. A lot of times we see dressers by the side of the road because they're missing handles. A lot of antique stores sell handles all over the place, guys. Apologize for the clocks. They go off every hour. It's just the way it is. But, you know, if you find the handles at antique stores or eBay, eBay will be your best friend. You can turn a little... $5 dresser into a $150 dresser with just a few tweaks of just adding a handle or replacing a leg piece. I mean, there's a lot of pieces out there that I'm telling you, it saves it from going to the dump. One thing I don't like is I don't like shabby chic stuff, but the one thing I will say positive about the shabby chicers out there is they have saved a lot of furniture from going to the dump or the burn pile. So I can I really appreciate that part of being a shabby chicer. But to me, just not my kind of look. The distressed white looks are never my thing, but they have saved a lot of pieces from going to the dump, and which that is a huge thing in our market. So very much a shout out to all the shabby chicers out there. So yeah, keep in touch there. And a quick story I can tell you guys, when we had a, a little child's cabinet, it had a huge mouse nest in it. It stunk, we couldn't even bring it inside. It took us about six, seven hours of work here and there over a few days of cleaning. Not hard work, it's just a little bit of work of cleaning out there. And guess what? We went that free child's cabinet turned into a $125 piece. So make sure when you guys are out there looking for stuff, don't think and don't be scared of putting a little work into keeping something alive because you could really turn small, you know, small buys into big profits. So restoration, guys, look into it. A lot of YouTubers out there restore antiques, check them out. Uh, they do a lot of good work and help support some of those fellow uh, antique YouTubers out there. All right, guys, let's get on to number two. Number two on our list today is garage, yard, and estate sales. Now, I'm sure you guys have been waiting for this to pop up on this list because it is such a huge part of the reseller world that we live in. But there are plenty of yard and garage sales out there. Get on Facebook to your local community pages. People post Facebook or, uh, yard sales and garage sales all the time. That is something I am on literally every Wednesday because most yard sales start on Thursday or Friday. I am on there Wednesday making a list of things out there I need to go to. So if I'm, you know, find 30 in one town and two in another town, I'm going to the other town for the huge community sales. You got to be out there and doing your research and finding out where these garage sales and yard sales are at. Now, obviously, they're not the way they were in the 90s where everything was a nickel and a dime and a quarter. and Everybody's just trying to move stuff. If you find those, you have found the unicorn. Those are very hard to come by, but when you find them, buy them out honestly because you won't find them very often but uh, a lot of times now people are trying to make a little more money off their stuff which i understand i get it that's part of the game but um you know you'll find still plenty of yard and garage sales out there that'll help sustain your business and help get some of your best finds out there now let's get into estate sales a little bit now estate sales can be a lot of fun but you got to get there early and sometimes the day before to sign up to get your name in there to get there early to go get the good stuff 
Now, a lot of times bringing an extra bag with you is important to start loading stuff up so you're not grabbing stuff and have to go back to the counter. Uh, there's a lot of tips for estate sales that are going to help you make a lot more money. Now, yes, some estate sales you go to are priced really, really high. Don't let that discourage you from going to other estate sales. I got a couple of ones, you know, like we talked about with our networking uh, countdown here. Um, is that you gotta find the estate sales that are priced well. I have a few estate sale companies that I go to that I know price stuff to sell it because they don't wanna deal with it anymore. So those are the ones I always look at first. So it goes back to that networking. You gotta talk to people, figure out who's the best ones to go to, who prices their stuff right. Are there discounts on the second day? Bigger discounts on the third day? Do your research, get out there and figure out which estate sales are ones that you need to go to and which ones you can probably avoid because you know the prices are gonna be high. Again, Garage sales and yard sales are going to be your biggest thing. So that April to October time frame is where resellers can really flourish out there and go and buy large quantities of items throughout the summer to help sustain them through the winter. So um, yes, make sure you got online. EstateSales.net is another thing you guys can look at to look up estate sales in your area. Just type in the zip code and whatever radius you want to deal with. And hopefully that helps you guys find some more estate sales in your area as well. So yes, garage sales, yard sales. I don't have to talk too much about them, guys. You know how important they are and how big they are in this business. Just get your butts up there, get up early and go and start shopping all these garage sales and yard sales and go out hunting because that's the best part of this business. That's a treasure hunt every day. All right, guys, let's get on to the number one. Number one on our list today is knowledge and research. Now, obviously, the fact that it's number one, you guys know this is the most important thing to me. I mention it in all of our Collecting 101 videos and plenty of other videos. The more knowledge you have in anything, the better off you're going to be. Now, how do you acquire that knowledge? Yeah, the first part of it is the long haul, which is experience. You just have to get out there and immerse yourself in this world. When you're at auctions, finding out, oh, this is what a big Fenton you know, sale sells for. Or this is what uh, a Roseville sells for, a Pyrex or cast iron. You'll be able to watch and just watch over time of what stuff is selling for. Even looking up eBay sold listings can be helpful as well. Just getting yourself out there and like, oh, this is what this stuff sells for on a consistent basis. And it just kind of puts something in the back of your brain. Now, giving yourself this knowledge, why is it important? So when people are at those estate sales and garage sales, and I see it all the time, and they're sitting there scrolling on their phones, on eBay sold listings, trying to find stuff, you're already going to know what this stuff sells for. You can just go buy, grab it, bag, go. It makes it so much easier. Yeah, it takes a little bit of work, but what thing does not take a little bit of work to get you know huge benefits out of? So that work you're gonna put in with that research throughout the weeks and throughout the months is only gonna help you when you get out to these sales and auctions. I'm telling you, it's very, very important. What other tips can you do to acquire that knowledge? Watch YouTube videos. There's a lot of great YouTubers out there that deal in different expertises on certain you know quality products i mean you're looking at holiday items or you're looking at gas and oil or you're looking at you know depression glass you name it there's a plenty of people out there that made videos that have a lot of knowledge on what they're doing and so if you get in there and you acquire that knowledge or watch collector videos of people that collect the certain items because they're out there and they have a lot of information on what to look for what to avoid how to identify reproductions how to identify original pieces and again, you don't have to know everything about everything, but to know a little bit about a lot of things, it is very, very helpful. So make sure you guys get out there and read those books, watch those YouTube videos, and just get the experience of the knowledge that this antiquing world can give you. And I'm telling you, you guys are going to make huge, huge dollars in this business. All right, guys. So that's our video today. Hopefully you guys learned something of the top five easiest ways to make money in the antiquing resale world. If there's anything I missed, make sure you guys put it in the comments below. And of course, if you guys want to like and subscribe and, you know, share this video, it's much appreciated, but it's never expected. We just enjoy the fact you guys didn't watch our videos, man. It's much appreciated. Thank you very much. And if you guys get some time and you want to come out and talk to me, I'm at my shop all the time or my wife's at the shop with me. Feel free to stop out and talk to us and get your antique fix on M66. See you guys later.